we have to talk about another mm -hmm. icon. Former actress on the iconic soap opera Guiding Light, Sonia Satra is guiding us in a new way with her book, What If It Were Easy? Now it's all about using movement and mindset to create success in all areas of life, love, and business. You say there was a need for this book, right? I think there is. I think there's a lot of people that are looking for success in life, love, and business. And so, and I think people are very used to having coaching or therapy or something where you're sitting, right? Or they'll go exercise and they'll go out and get fit. But this is something that actually brings them together. And what I found was that when you exercise, studies show that you're more creative, you're more focused, you can problem solve. It taps the motivation center of your brain. It, in, in, you know, in, like, is huge in terms of mental health and getting rid of depression and anxiety. So all of these things set you up for success and then we add in a mindset process to really capitalize on it. Love it. Now, Star and Guiding Light, One Life to Live, what did you learn about that time in your life that kind of led you to become an author in, of a book such as this? <laughs> I think it was, <laughs> it was my training ground for that. <laughs> yeah. Cause, you know, in entertainment, you get rejected a lot. Mm. And so I learned very quickly that you really had to have a strong mindset. It wasn't always the best actors, but it was the people with the strongest mindset who persevered and actually made it. So I started to study that all the time, and probably as much as I studied acting. And I actually used Moda Size way before I ever even dreamt of making it a business. I had just gotten off Guiding Light, and I went back. I had imposter syndrome totally. I thought, oh no, I'm never going to work again. And, uh, and I didn't. A year and a half later, I had completely embodied this idea I was never going to work. So I decided I was going to change everything. I was going to run. I was going to start asking better questions, visualize my success, do affirmations. And I would do that in Santa Monica Mountains. And I, up on the top of the mountain, there was a bridge. And you could yell out. And it would echo. So I would yell out, you got the job. And I'd hear back, <laughs> you got the it. job. <laughs> and I'd celebrate it. And then I would run back down. And after not working for a year and a half, three weeks later, I booked a national commercial. And three months later, I got the call to do One Life to Live. So it changes. It really, it just, it gets into your body, into your cells, into your soul, into your mind in a whole different way. And she's living proof. Yeah. Yeah. So then how do you teach the mindset reset? So it's a seven step process. And originally I did it to a kind of aerobics and I would match the mindset with the moves. Mm. So like if we were pulling in something, what do you have? We would do things with like bicep curls or, you know, victory poses for how do you feel when you succeed or things like that. So you could correlate the movement with the mindset. But not everybody loves aerobics. And so I also do it with people when they walk. You, I also have an audio. You could do it when you run. Or if you're on a cycling, I do a spin class with it. So anything that just elevates your heart rate a little bit. You're not trying to go into overload. We're not doing like hardcore boot camp, mm -hmm. although you do get your heart rate up. But um, we want to get into that sweet spot, that flow zone, because that's when your brain is the most open. Mm, the flow zone. And it takes a a couple, you know, things before you get there in uh, your your uh, chapter. Okay, so how do you actually do modicize? You talk about not enough. Those two words you said, quote, are one of the biggest showstoppers in human history. I do want to talk about that because sometimes we've got to get over those hills to get to that free flowing area. We do, we do, and that's why this process really starts with. The question, what if it were easy, right? Mm -hmm. Because when we decide we want to get into something, especially if you're feeling stuck or not enough, everything feels hard. And from that perspective, it's even harder. <laughs> and so what if it were easy is really just giving you permission to open your heart, open your soul. What if it were easy? What would you do? And then we imagine, well, what would that look like? What would it feel like? How would, who would be around you? What are you doing? All of this stuff feels good. Then what do you have because again when you have a challenge people look at all the things they don't have mm -hmm. but when you start with what do you have everybody has something they have desire they have energy they have contacts they have skill sets and we never think about it so by the time you get through the first half of the process then you're starting to get on the way and it starts to help you get over that feeling of it's impossible or I'm not enough.
because what if it were easy? Exactly. What if it were easy? Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Sonia's book, What If It Were Easy, is available now. Check it out wherever books are sold.